Lake Erie shares borders with Michigan, Ohio, Pennsylvania, New York, and Ontario, Canada. Without question, the Ontario waters of Lake Erie see the least amount of fishing pressure. Long Point, located near the town of Port Rowan, Ontario, juts out into Lake Erie, creating a natural protection from the prevailing westerly winds. Near the tip of Long Point, deep water harbors a mixed bag of steelhead and walleye that rarely see a fishing lure. This overlooked destination is one of the few places in the Great Lakes where anglers routinely catch a limit of both steelhead and walleye on the same day. Hectic here, Dad. That Sun's fishing. coming up in the morning. Trying to get line set. We got riggers going off with some chrome. Ooh, I see him. He's close. He's it. right here, man. He's oh, right here. Man. This fish is fighting good here, too. Can't wait to see this fish, Dad. A little closer. Oh, <laughs> Whoa, stay in that bucket. Man, he almost came back out of the net. <laughs> in the net's good. Out of the net, not so good. All right, let's show this guy off. Look at that, just an absolute porker. We're out here on Lake Erie today targeting steelhead. And let me tell you, you might not think of Lake Erie as a steelhead fishery. A lot of people think of it as a walleye fishery, but it is a world-class steelhead fishery. What a beautiful fish. Well, that's the spoon that just caught that beautiful steelhead. That's a silver streak. And uh, that's a standard style spoon. We'll be primarily running two spoons today, the standard size and the slightly smaller mini size. Um, both of them are excellent steelhead spoons. And then you can see there's a leader here. And as I choke up and come down to my rod tip, that little rascal there, you may not have ever seen that before. That's a big Al fish flash. And just what it's doing right now in the wind, that's what it does in the water. It spins, creates flash, brings fish into the gear. So the fish flash, about six foot back to the spoon. I'm setting this about 20 to 30 feet behind the downrigger ball, and it's game on. It doesn't get much better than that for catching open water steelhead in the Great Lakes. Oh, baby. Feels like a pretty good fish here. Feels like a pretty good fish. We'll get that clicker off there. We don't need to bait clicker on anymore, do we? Oh, man, that feels good. I like it when things start early in the morning. And uh, it's balmy, warm, sticky, humid. Perfect weather, perfect weather for summertime steelhead. And people think, wow, that doesn't seem like a good combination for steelhead, but it is. Because all these fish are down lower in the water column where it's cool. And that balmy hot weather is forced these fish to be down by the thermocline. So they're stacking up in predictable places. And that's what makes it fun. You can predict where they're going to be, you get your gear, 
to those depths, and it is game on. Game on. I'd like to think that I got this guy under control here, Jake, but you never know with, with chrome. It could go crazy at the last second. Here he is. Nice fish. Very nice fish. Nice fish. <laughs> Look at that. That will put a smile on your face in the morning. No way to tell whether this fish has been stocked by Ohio or by Pennsylvania, but at this point, I really don't care. I'm just so happy to be catching steelhead on Lake Erie in July. Wow, what a great thing. Through the magic of television, it looks like we just came out here, jumped a bunch of lines in the water, and immediately started to slam fish. And that's not exactly what happened. Before we set any lines, the very first thing we did is we took our downrigger, hooked up our fish hawk probe, dropped that probe down, and we started looking for what we consider to be suitable water temperatures at depth. And we're talking about steelhead here, so the ideal water temperature for steelhead is going to be 55 to 62 degrees. In that range, there's a very good likelihood you're going to find steelhead. So let's just say we're in 70 feet of water and we don't have that temperature all the way to the bottom. Well, it's not good water. There aren't going to be any steelhead here, so there's no point in setting lines. So the first thing we do is we put the probe down, various depths, try to find what we consider the sweet water, the water that has the right temperature. And then once we find that temperature, that tells us obviously where we're going to run our downriggers. We then know we can use the precision trolling app and we can decide how much line we have to let out to get our dipsy divers to run down to that depth. And we can do the same thing with the precision trolling app on our leg core setups that made it easy for us to decide we were going to do seven and 10 colors today because we know those are going to run in the temperature zones where these fish are going to be. And lo and behold, every single presentation on the boat has caught fish. That's how you troll the precision trolling line. Special considerations are provided by the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association and by Stryker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Special considerations are provided by Fish Hawk Electronics. Fishing without a fish hawk is called boating. Okay, I'm going to take a second and talk about the Dipsy Diver. And a Dipsy Diver is a very popular tool for getting down to depth with a very little amount of line out. And right here I have a Dipsy Diver rod. And this is actually a rod my dad and I developed for Eagle Claw. And the one thing I really like about this rod is it's a nine foot long rod, a nine foot Dipsy rod. But one of the things this rod has that there's not another one on the market that does it is the fact that it's a telescoping rod. What that means is that I can actually push that rod down like that makes it more compact, easier to store, and I can put this Dipsy Diver rod inside the rod locker. It's a really a nice feature. But one of the things here is I'm going to talk about setting this Dipsy Diver. Now, there's a lot of different options, but what I want to do is create as long of a leader as I possibly can from the diver itself to the spoon that we're fishing. This water is relatively clear, and having a longer leader is really beneficial. The way that I'm doing that is basically I'm just taking fluorocarbon, 20 pound test fluorocarbon and I have a nice long leader. All the way back there is my spoon. And then I take this diver and instead of clipping it on the line where it's actually attached to the line, in line, more traditional way you'd hook up a diver, basically just taking this Dipsy diver with an offshore OR16 release on there and basically I'm just clipping it right onto the line. Very much like you would hook up maybe a snap weight. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna swing it over to the side and I'm gonna let it in the water. When I do it, the one thing with this system is you just have to go slow. Slowly put the diver in the water, and then what I like to do is back off on the star drag of the reel and let that diver kind of click out from the drag itself. And if you do that, it's kind of a foolproof system. You get a nice long leader. Now when a fish bites and it releases, all I have to do is unhook that diver and then it's you and the fish. So what it allows is you to have a nice long leader without necessarily having to hand over hand that fish at the back of the boat with a really long leader. So it's a nice easy system. Again, you just take an OR16 offshore release, put it on any of your divers on that front arm, and it's a great system for running long leaders. Now this is like core, of course. And uh, you can fish a multitude of different kinds of leg core. On the boat right now, we're carrying three colors, five colors, seven colors, and ten colors. And the reason we're carrying so much leg core is we don't know at what depth these fish are going to show up at. So we have to be prepared to fish multiple depths. Now, obviously, a three color doesn't fish as deep as a five, and a seven fishes deeper than a five, and a ten fishes deeper than a seven. And so by having all of those, we have the luxury of fishing whatever depth that we need to target these fish. Also, if we were in a situation where we were fishing a lot of lead core, we could stagger lines. We could put, a, say, a five color on the outside and a 10 color on the inside. Um, so they were fish two different depths, allowing us to be able to catch a fish on the five color, reel it in without having to remove the 10 color from the setup. So that's a very good uh, tool. 
you see us using lead core on fishing 401 a lot, and you're going to continue to see us using it a lot. Um, as Jake describes it, it's fishing. It catches a lot of fish. And, um, and so we continuously put it in the water because it just works, flat out works. And then when you combine it with an offshore board, getting it out to the side, whew, that is a deadly one-two punch. It is hard to beat that. Really, really hard to beat that. Maybe a little north of four to five. Oh, that's a go. big nice fish. That. Nice fish. Oh, man. and the spoon pops off in the landing net. Not a bad bonus fish right there. Not a bad bonus fish at all. And the cool thing about Lake Erie is walleye don't count against your steelhead limit. So you can get a limit of steelhead and a limit of walleye. Not very many places in North America you can make that happen. That is a stud walleye. Yeah, you got one going on your side over here. I will gladly take it for you, though. <laughs> I guess you snooze, you lose. Yeah. So, this is a leg core line here, which is really a, 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 it's an awesome tool for the style of fishing. You know, if you watch Fishing 4 and one before, you've heard us talk about leg core, because it's just a fishy presentation for getting down to depth. Now in this case, this is a 10 color of leg core, so it's 100 yards of line. It's a weighted line with a coating on it. And basically, you let a lot of line out, you hook it up to an offshore tackle planer board and you send it out to the side. And the good thing about this system is you're fishing fish that aren't spooked by the presence of the boat. By putting it on a planer board, you get it away from the boat. The spoon is a long ways away from the boat. It's a great way to target suspended fish without worrying about spooking these fish with the presence of the boat itself. Whoa, he is mad too. Oh, that's a big fish. That is a big fish. That is a big steelhead, Dad. Get that him. Is a big, big steelhead right there. <laughs> nice job, Jake. Way to, way to steal the old man's fish. Wow, I'm Ooh, glad baby. that's one I took. That might be one of my biggest steelhead. I have been blessed to catch a lot of steelhead in my life. And maybe I've caught some bigger ones, but I'm telling you right now, you're going to be hard pressed to find a better steelhead than that one right there. Just a big buck got that kite on his mouth up there. Look, I mean, look at that. That is about as pretty as you're going to ever find a fish swimming in fresh water right there. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems, your fishing equipment experts. Special considerations are provided by ProCure, ruthlessly effective bait sets. Yeah, baby, look at that. Woo! Travelite Truck Campers presents the 411 on fishing. This past season on Fishing 411 TV, we've been powering our boats with Abyss lithium batteries. There's a lot of really cool technology with these batteries. The whole lithium thing is very interesting to me. One, the power. You really can't beat the power with these lithium batteries. Two, the fast charging is huge. We can fish all day, dark to dark. In only a couple hours to plug that boat in, we can get that boat fully charged again. But the coolest thing for me with these batteries is the fact that they're Bluetooth compatible. And what that means is Abyss has a phone app. I can go right on the phone app right here and I can see what's the life of these batteries. On the day on the water, I can pull my phone out really quick and see how much battery percentage do I still have on the day. But even more important than that, we do a lot of traveling and going from hotel to hotel, we can stop in at the hotel and plug in our boats. I can pull out my phone and quickly see that everything is charging within the boat. So I don't have to worry about coming back out in the morning, not having a boat charged correctly and not being able to fish the very next day. So the, the phone app is super simple to use. Basically, you're gonna go into the app itself and you can see on the screen right now, this battery, our 36 volt battery that we use for our electric motor, right now is charged to 100%. It's ready to rock and roll for the day. It's telling us that I have 104.99 amp hours in that battery and it's cranking out 40.18 volts at the battery right now. So it's a beast. It's a battery that's gonna last you absolutely all day long no problem there. But the nice thing with the phone app is it shows it all right there. All of this stuff just allows me to know on any given day what's happening in the boat. The one thing with these batteries is they get dropped in the belly of the beast and they don't get looked at. But being able to see everything right on your phone just gives you that peace of mind that knows everything's hooked up right on your boat. Everything is going to be good for that day out on the water. He sniped one of my fish earlier so I guess it's only only fair that I should be able to uh, snipe one of his. So interesting how it evens out early on a lot of the bites were on my side of the boat but now um, it's pretty much even the bites are on both sides of the boat so and now uh, 
let's land this walleye and then uh, I think the downrigger's got a walleye in it. I watched that uh, hop a little bit there, so that'll be next up. Nice size fish, Dad. That's a good size walleye, that's for sure. Full full shirt. Nice. That's a net full. Beautiful, look at that. A little bit of fins, some sunshine, walleye gold. You gotta love that. That is a beautiful thing. When it comes to targeting summertime steelhead, the presentation you're going to use, what lure you're going to use, it's pretty simple. You have two options. You have a spoon and you have a spoon. Spoons are really hard to beat for summertime steelhead fishing, but one of the things that I want to talk about is the size of the spoon that you're going to use. Now this is a Silver Streak Standard, a standard size spoon, and it works really well. But one of the things that I found is that the mini size spoon, a little bit smaller presentation, also works really well. And So I like to give these fish both options on any given day and let the fish tell us what they like. For me, day in and day out, it's the mini size spoon, but one of the things we're seeing out here today is that we're fishing where there's a lot of bait, an unbelievable amount of bait, and so having a little bit bigger profile bait helps you stick out a little bit. And then when it comes to color, I'm pretty biased when it comes to color for steelhead fishing. I really like the color orange. We normally catch a lot of steelhead with orange. On this particular episode, we had a close friend tell us that they're catching them on purple, so we've been running a lot of purple, and that's been really good too. So you want to have a different assortment of these lures, different colors, different sizes, but at the end of the day, it's a simple chunk of metal we call a spoon catches these steelhead. When your bonus fish are four and five pound walleyes, uh, that right there is what I consider to be an excellent day on the water. Good mixed bag, foam steelhead, and golden walleye. You know, we're downrigger fishing today, and when you're downrigger fishing, you need rod holders to hold your rods for fishing downriggers. And typically, most downriggers like this can and come with a rod holder. Sometimes they come with two rod holders. But you notice I've got a Cisco rod holder in here as well. So you're wondering, why are we doing it like this? Well, the Cisco we set up to be in line. I like the rod in line with the boat because it's easy to see when it bucks. When you put the rod out like this, it's a little bit more difficult to see that. But why didn't I take that other rod holder off? Well, when we got a fish coming to the back of the boat and we need a little bit more room, I can take that rod and set it out there. That just opened up six more foot of space at the back of the boat to land fish. So that rod tube right there is valuable. We don't take it off. But for everyday fishing, this is where we're gonna put a rod, right in that inline tube. That's gonna help you catch more fish on downriggers. Special considerations provided by Abyss Battery. Power your pursuit. Special considerations are provided by the Ultimate Sports Show Tour, Michigan's premier sports shows. We got one going again on the seven color, Dad. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. The planer boards and leg core have been good today, but everything has been good for the most part. I mean, we've caught fish on downriggers, we've caught fish on divers. Every single line that we have out has caught fish today. You know, one of the nice things about where we're fishing today, we're fishing in Ontario, we're fishing that north shore of Lake Erie, we're fishing near Long Point. And if you look at Long Point on the map, it comes a long ways out here into Lake Erie. So we actually made a decent boat ride today. We ran 13, 14 miles to get to these fish. But you can see the shoreline's not very far away. So you're offshore steelhead fishing, but literally I can see the lighthouse right there. You feel like you're close to shore. The other nice thing, because of that point that sticks out, it's relatively windy today. It's probably blowing 15, maybe even 20 miles an hour. And a lot of times when it blows like that, you just can't run offshore and catch steelhead. But because it's so protected with that point, it makes it so we can get out here and still target these fish on most days. And we came out here today to catch a pile of steelhead. And we've caught a lot of steelhead, it's been good. The bycatch though, I knew we would get some walleye, I didn't know we were going to see fish of this caliber, and we've seen a decent number of these fish today too, so whenever your bycatch are big, fat, healthy Lake Erie walleyes, I'm not complaining at all. And it's cool, it's summertime, you know, you're so used to, we're spoiled in the Great Lakes, we catch a lot of big walleye, but a lot of our big walleye come in the spring and in the fall, and we just don't catch as many big fish in the summer, so it pretty makes me happy to see a fish like that in July. There he is. Acrobatic, Dad. Jumping all over. That's a fat one. That is a fat one. That's what we're looking for. Oh, yeah. 
Doesn't that drag go? <laughs> These walleyes have been fun to catch today, but that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for a drag screamer. That is fun. That is fun. The bite slowed down a little bit on the steelhead side of things since the sun's come up. But you know what, that's pretty normal. We wanted to get out here early, that's why we launched this morning. You saw the videos launching. It was pretty dark when we launched. We wanted to get out here early. And uh, honestly, a little bit of cloud cover would have helped us today and kept this bite lasting longer. Um, but the nice thing about Lake Erie is there's so many different things to catch out here. That when the steelhead start to slow down, there's still walleyes to catch and other species to catch out here. But you can still get these steelhead during the day. And we've obviously got one it's middle of the day right now and we're hooked up, but it definitely seems like getting out here early in the morning, that low light, that's when those fish are really firing. A little bit closer. There you go. That is a big one. That's a nice fish right there. I cannot wait to show this one off. Now that, my friends, is a beautiful Lake Erie steelhead right there. That's exactly what we came out here for, and we've been blessed to catch quite a few of these today. Hey, my name is Jake Romanek, and you've been watching Fishing 4-on-1. We'll see you here same time, same place next week. But don't forget, Lake Erie, it's one heck of a steelhead fishery. Come out here, put some downriggers out, some divers, and some leg core, and catch you some beautiful steelhead. Closed captioning is provided by Precision Trolling Data. Fishing 411 TV is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Starcraft Marine, Suzuki Marine, J Sporting Goods, Smooth Move Seats, Niagara Falls, USA, Eagle Claw, Bill Lewis, and Yakima Bait Company. As opposed to as opposed to a male. What a beautiful fish. Lake Erie Chrome. Oh! Lake Erie Chrome at its finest. It don't get much better than that. And uh, I'll take a whole bunch of these. In fact, we have taken a whole bunch of these.